Hi everyone, it's Jason here and I made a post on the PBN Week group about how to use your servers, whether they be dedicated or VPSs, as a proxy for you to reduce the amount of information that you give away when you're working on your websites. Um, the post URLs here, it's in the PBN Week group and I've had lots of thanks and thank you very much for all of those thanks that uh, I've received. Um, Someone in the comments, and I can't remember who it was, but thank you for uh, bringing this up, said, look, Jason, this is a little bit complex and out of my comfort level. Would you mind just doing a video to try and explain and show and effectively demonstrate what you mean? And I thought, sure, why not? So here I am. Now, one of the things I'm of the few was that using Tor, and the Onion Router as it's known, it was a project that was originally uh, funded by the US Navy, if I remember rightly, um, what was a way to hide your tracks online. And I went, hold on a second. If you use Tor, as well as slowing your actual work down to, a, to almost a crawl, you're, you're replacing the red flag of your IP that may or may not be a red flag, but you're replacing it and saying, hey, this person's trying to hide something. Why are they doing that? Because the Tor IP addresses, the exit nodes as they're known, are, are really easily available on public information. So you're replacing one potential red flag with probably a real red flag and saying, hey, come and get me. So what, what I am of the view is if you can use your servers and um, because their information, their domain names, their host names, their IP addresses is really known because you're putting it out there. If you can use those for your work and remembering not to cross contaminate, of course, if you can use them for your work, you're not giving any new information away. And they're generally going to be speedy connections as well, because they're on hopefully decent servers. Um, which means that your browsing that, that you do in implementing and, uh, and delivering the work on, on your sites won't give any new information away. Now, Secure Shell, SSH uh, uh, as it's commonly known, uh, um, it, it's most commonly used for a command line access to Unix and Linux like computers. Um, that's not all it's available for. You, you, there's lots of functionality in there that isn't necessarily used every day by everyone, but one of the methods that you can use is use it as a SOX5 proxy. I won't get into what SOX5 means, but essentially it's a proxy that you can use in your web browser, and that's all you need to know for this demonstration. Um, it's important, of course, that you use a clean browser. Don't use your standard browser because all the, all the plugins that you've got, I've got lots up here, uh, and extensions and so on and so forth will potentially give away further information and background noise to the work that you do online, whether it be from the adverts that I see down here or otherwise. Uh, um, the cookies and information that's shared there can, can, can be the unifying uh, data point that brings it together. So I'm going to give an example of using uh, a portable app. Now I'm on a Mac. Uh, it's going to be different on a Windows, but the principles are the same. If you use Linux, it's actually slightly easier because the functionality is inbuilt into the OS as it is here with uh, a BSD-derived operating system of OS X. Now, uh, um, I may try and do a Windows demo as well. I don't actually have access to a Windows machine easily locally. I've got on remote servers and things via VMware and others, but, but for now I'm going to do it on a Mac and hope that there's enough information in this demonstration along with the notes that I put on the post in uh, PBN Week Group to make it relatively simple for you to use. Um, you could use uh, um, separate profiles within Chrome or whatever your web browser is, but I'm going to go for a portable app. So, open a new tab, Mac OS X, cute puppy and uh, kitten picture there to keep everyone amused. Mac OS X portable apps, and I'm going to end up somewhere. Here we go, free smug. Um, and the reason I'm going for a portable app, a portable app is effectively a self-contained application that you don't uh, uh, install. It, traditionally, it was used for Windows and used on USB keys and USB devices, so you can carry everything around you on any computer that you go to. But for this uh, reason, I'm going to go here. I'm actually going to go for the live CD version. The main reason being is it opens Firefox from read-only media, and read-only is important because it means it won't save any of the data. It may save it temporarily on your hard drive, but when you... Uh, log out and reboot, or, or uh, um, it, it, will, it will get wiped. So I'm going to download this. Download a DMG, which is the Mac form of uh, 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 downloading applications. Um, it, it's a file format for compressed uh, uh, drive images. Um, so as I wait for that to download, 
Um, I'm going to open that in a second. And it's almost here. There we go. I'm going to say, show this to me in Finder, which it will go off and fire up Finder, which is like Explorer for Mac. It's a, um, a way of uh, a, a traversing through your file system. Show in Finder, come on computer, do your work. It's opening the image here. And I should get pop up. Here we go. Firefox Live OS X. I'm going to right click on this and click open. The reason for that is it's an unsigned file. If you just double clicked on it, Mac would uh, say, don't let me open this because it hasn't been signed with their security key. But that's fine. Um, I'm going to click again, open. And while I wait for that to open, it does the verifying of the app. Yes, that's fine. I do want to open it. And it says it's actually going to install stuff into a temporary folder, which is exactly what you want. It'll be deleted when user logs out. Excellent. So as Firefox opens up here, we're just waiting for a few seconds, hopefully not minutes. I could do with a faster laptop, but... Uh, Hey, there we are. Here we go. No, I don't want it as my default browser. So click no. And here we go, Firefox. Now, pretty quickly, what is my IP? We go off, go to whatsmyip.com, and here we go, I've got 82.6. Dot something. If I'm wise and clever, I'll remember to uh, blur that information out so you can't see that. But you can see there. I'm on uh, an IP address, 82.6. If I do it in my main Chrome browser, what is my IP? I get should get the same information here, 82.6. So on and so forth, that's great. So let me just get back Firefox. There we are. Now, what I'm going to do is open a terminal. Now, I use an app called iTerm. You get the, uh, the same functionality uh, from Terminal, um, it's just personal preference. Terminal's a standard app within Mac. Now, the important factors to remember here are SSH hyphen D and a port number. I'm going to go for 9999. It could be any number you want. I'd suggest you'd go for one above 1024. Technical reasons, it just makes life a little bit easier if you go for a higher number port. Um, and I'm going to go for 9999. It's easy to remember. And then I'm going to log on, give my username and password. Um, and again, if I'm wise, I will remember to blur some of this information out. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to log in. It's going to SSH. It's asking for my password. You won't see this, but you will hear my please clattering away. And I now have a proxy open. Uh, on localhost uh, uh, that's routing all the traffic through port 9999 find my server. So again I'm going to go to what is my IP. It will come up here and it says it's 82.6. something. I'm now going to go to Firefox preferences. I think it's security, I'm not sure. No it's not, it's privacy. Security, where are we? Advanced, I can't remember where it is. Network, here we go, it's under Advanced Networks. Configure how Firefox connects to the internet. Settings. Now, manual proxy configuration, that's important. And it's socks that we want. So I can type in here, localhost. Um, I could equally put 127.0.0.1, the default uh, 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 version of that, and the port 9999. And it's important here that we click socks 5. So that's done. I'll close that now. And I'm going to refresh this. What is my IP? My IP address is completely different. 188.165. Various things, which hopefully again I'm going to blur. Now, you can see here that my IP address is completely different. If I go back to uh, 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 Chrome, my standard browser, and say what's my IP address, it should still remain as it was before, which was 82 point something. And I'll wait for that to load. What is my IP? Something's gone wrong, so I'm going to type it manually. 
82.6.something. So back here, it now means that all of my work that I'm going to be doing via this browser, which is Firefox uh, 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 in the temporary image, is going to be uh, uh, self-contained and give no further information away because all of the information that I'm doing and work I'm doing online via this browser it is going to be clean and rooted via my server. And that, ladies and gents, is uh, the end of this demonstration. I hope that it's added some value.